Hey guys, how are my beautiful people doing? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Dan. Uh, I look crazy today. I'm sorry about that. I just uh, I just walked out. I took a shower. So I'm, I am a little bit red because I have all this blood flowing everywhere, I guess. And I also I had a chemical pill a couple of days ago and I'm still not completely recovered from that, as you can see. But it is the perfect time to review a sunscreen, I guess. <laughs> I'm gonna review this SOS SPF 50. I actually included this one in my 2021 favorites. This is an amazing sunscreen. I really like this one. I've been using it every day almost for the last couple of weeks. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna review it. Before I start, please consider following me on Instagram, on Facebook, subscribe to this channel for more videos uh, related to skincare. Ring that bell so you get notified every time I post something. And I'm gonna start the review as always with uh, the packaging. I have a uh, great, Palm bottle, really like this one. It's uh, airless, it's gonna protect the product inside from light, from air. Great packaging, 10 out of 10. Um, it's not so easy to travel with because we have a pretty big amount in here, but they do sell, I think like a 50 ml version of this. Yeah, they have a 50 ml version. You can travel with that one, I guess. I'm not sure. When it comes to price, I paid around $40 for this one, which is the most expensive sunscreen I've ever purchased. Uh, actually, the most expensive skincare product I've ever purchased, I think. But you get 200 ml in this one, which is a very high amount. So overall, it's very cost effective and it's worth it in my opinion. But yeah, it is pretty, it is pretty pricey. You get how much you get. You get 200 ml, which is 6.7 fluid ounces. So that's basically like three sunscreens in one. I mean, the amount, so um, I think it's worth it. It's, it's worth it in my opinion. Now, when it comes to irritant ingredients, we don't have any of those in here. This one is alcohol-free, which is pretty hard to find in a uh, nicely formulated sunscreen. So uh, that's really nice. We, we don't have any um, fragrance. However, this one does have a scent, and I guess it comes from one of the ingredients. I have no idea from which one exactly, but it is fragrance-free, but it has Kind of like a floral smell, a scent, I would say. It's not very powerful, it dissipates after a while, but yeah, it, it does have a scent, so if you have a fragrance allergy, I would be careful with, with this one. Um, and this one is Fungal Acne Safe, which is very hard to find, and especially for such a nice sunscreen, I'm really happy it is Fungal Acne Safe, I'm able to use it. I didn't have a fungal acne flare-up with this one. It's gonna be very, very safe for acne-prone skin because it is fungal acne safe. When it comes to sunscreen filters, there is something I don't really like about their advertising. They are they're advertising this sunscreen as a mineral sunscreen, and it is not. It is actually a combination sunscreen. It has chemical and mineral filters, organic and non-organic filters. Um, and actually, if you check the ingredient list, the mineral filters are after all the chemical filters. So in a pretty small amount, I would say, so I would not say this one is a mineral sunscreen. That's the thing that I don't really like about their advertising. Um, and I am going to start applying this sunscreen so you guys can see how it looks like on my face. I'm going to talk about the filters that we have in here. Let me open up the ingredient list. One pump of this actually gives me the, the perfect amount for my entire face. I would say. We have octisalate in this one, which is a, uh, oh, my hair is gonna give me some troubles here. Um, I like dabbing the sunscreen on my face. I feel like uh, it's easier to spread. Um, should I talk about the filters or the texture? I don't know what to do. <laughs> so we have octisalate in this one, which is an old generation filter, uh, but it is one of the safest old generation filters. Uh, it covers UVB. Then we have insulizole. This one is nice because it's not oil soluble, it's water soluble, so it's good for creating a very lightweight formula, which this one is, and I'm gonna talk about the texture a little bit later. Uh, covers UVB again, it's pretty stable. We have avobenzone, which I think everybody knows, covers UVA, uh, but it is pretty unstable. However, I think they stabilized it in this formula, but I'm not sure because I'm not a chemical, I'm not a chemist. A cosmetic formulator, that's what I wanted to say. After that, we have a filter that I've never heard of, which is amyloxate, I guess that's how you pronounce it. Uh, this one is actually a new generation filter. 
because it's a new generation filter, it's less sensitizing, less irritating, uh, offers UVB protection, UVA2, which is really nice. It's not approved in USA, of course, it's only available in uh, Europe. So uh, those are the chemical filters, and then we have uh, titanium oxide and zinc oxide, both mineral filters. Zinc oxide um, offers UVB and UVA protection. I guess it's nano in this formula because it doesn't give a white cast. Uh, titanium dioxide, again, uh, offers UVB and UVA type, either one or two, I'm not sure. Oh, oh so yeah, it actually covers UVB, UVA2, and a little bit UVA1. So it's pretty, it's a pretty broad spectrum mineral filter. Now, there was this discussion last year that uh, zinc oxide and um, avobenzone should not be used together in the same sunscreen. And we have both in, in this one. But I think, again, I'm not a chemist, I'm not a cosmetic formulator. I think there is a problem with zinc oxide and avobenzone when they are the main or the only filters in the sunscreen. In this case, zinc oxide is the last filter. We have a probably a pretty small amount of that in here. And besides that, we have many other filters, chemical filters, new generation filters to stabilize the avobenzone, to offer good protection. So I don't know if uh, there is a problem there because I know the avobenzone actually degrades the titanium, titanium dioxide or something like that. Did I say titanium? It's not titanium dioxide, it's zinc oxide. Sorry guys, I'm like a mess here. Um, it compromises the effectiveness of zinc oxide. Take that with, with a grain of salt. Like I said, I'm not a, a cosmetic formulator. I'm gonna start applying this one. I've been sitting with it on my face for like a couple of minutes. But this sunscreen feels just like a moisturizer, just a really nice moisturizer. It spreads really nicely. It absorbs very quickly. Look how red I got. Just. That's not the sunscreen, guys. That's just my reactive skin. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> I know I'm using both hands, which I should not do. <laughs> but when I'm filming, I just want to spread it. it. It's so much easier for me to spread it with both hands when I'm filming and I don't have a mirror. But as you guys saw, it spreads very, very fast. Uh, it absorbs pretty quickly. It's not matte, but it's not greasy either. It just offers this really nice glow that a moisturizer would offer you. And um, it does have a white cast on my skin tone, and I think it's gonna be pretty safe for people with darker skin tone. I don't think it's gonna offer, a, it's gonna have a white cast. Yeah, this one just basically feels like a nice a Korean sunscreen. Very easy to spread, has a very nice texture, very nice finish. Very, high. it's one of the nicest sunscreens in terms of texture and feel and finish that I that I have. And uh, it's also from Lucky Safe, which is so, 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 so nice. So now I am going to talk about the ingredient list a little bit. The, the other ingredients besides the filters. You guys, this is one of the worst videos I've ever filmed, actually. I, it's, I feel like it's such a mess. I apologize. Uh, so after all the... We have water as the first ingredient. Then we have all the filters, the sunscreen filters. Then we have... Dimethicon, which is a silicone. It's one of my favorite ingredients, actually. It feels really nice. I know some people try to avoid silicones, so um, you have to be aware of that. It has Dimethicon, which gives it this really nice spreadability. Uh, I feel like it makes the sunscreen a little bit more matte than it would be without it. Uh, we have glycerin, which is my favorite humectant. We have some glycine, also known as soy steam cells, which um, we don't have a lot of data on, but it's supposed to be an antioxidant and uh, brighten your skin as far as I know. But there's a pretty small amount and we don't have a lot of data to back up the effectiveness of that. There's some hyaluronic acid, which is a humectant. Yeah, that's the entire ingredient list, actually. It's one of the shortest ingredient lists I've ever seen in a sunscreen. And that's nice, because people with sensitive skin, they're not gonna have problems with this one. It's pretty sensitive skin friendly. However, there is avobenzone, and you might be allergic to that. And, um, and like I said, this one has a scent. Uh, I guess it comes from the glycine. Does glycine have a smell? This, I don't... I think any other ingredient might give this one a smell, I, I don't know. But yeah guys, that's my uh, kind of messy review for this sunscreen. It deserves better than that. Uh, 
I hope you give it a shot. Let me know if you've ever tried it. What do you think about it? Um, it uh, I forgot to mention, it doesn't peel on my skin. It doesn't boil. It doesn't peel on my skin. My sunscreen is one of the few fungal acne safe sunscreens on the market. It's pretty affordable considering the, um, the amount that you get. Yeah, um, leave a comment down below. Leave some questions there. I might answer to those in future videos. And uh, I love you all, guys, and I will see you all in my next video. Bye. Oh my God, I'm, I look crazy.